Hello, everyone, and welcome to my first episode of NES Emulator Development. Now, you may be wondering, why am I doing this? Aren't there hundreds of fully featured and well-made emulators out there? And the answer would be yes. However, my point when doing this is as a learning experience, both for programming practice and just developing a better understanding of how computers work under the hood. And I thought the NES would be a good place to start because it runs on a relatively simple architecture built around the MOS Technologies 6502 processor. All right, now with that out of the way, let's dive in. I will begin by implementing the CPU itself, starting with the registers. And these represent the accumulator, X and Y indices, status or flags, and the stack pointer, as well as the 16-bit program counter. All right, and I should probably create a uh, debug function to print out those values. I'll just print one value to test the formatting and then apply it to the others. All right, that looks like it worked. And now that I have the registers implemented, I think I'll spend some time off camera and just familiarize myself with how the instructions work on the 6502. And I'll come back once I'm ready to implement all of them. As you can see, I went ahead and added a few things off camera, starting with a variable to keep track of how many clock cycles have passed, which isn't required now, but it'll be useful later on to help synchronize various other components, especially for programs that update the graphics while they're being drawn. And then I also added some internal functions to set and clear the appropriate flags, as these will be two very common actions among the various CPU instructions. And then I went ahead and started adding a few simple instructions to get the hang of it, starting with ones that don't require any memory, and I'll get into the memory map when it becomes necessary. So these instructions set or clear the appropriate flags, update the appropriate registers, and then advance the clock and program counter in line with the length of the instruction. And then simul similarly, we have a few instructions that work entirely within the accumulator and set in flags and instructions that do essentially just work between registers or clearing flags where the action is explicitly stated and there's no hidden mechanics there. 